Okay. So, uh, we will uh, start uh, with one sutta. And uh, after that, uh, uh, I'll kind of uh, go to the question and answers. Let us see, uh, I, I will go through the suttas first. And then uh, we will uh, do a little bit of uh, question and answers if you want. Or do you want to start with question answers? Is somebody wants, uh, wants to ask some questions first or uh, do we start with the sutta? Okay, we'll start with the sutta when nobody has come forth. So this is a sutta from Mangutra Nikaya. This is 27. I think it is uh, from book of seven. Uh, it is called Animity. So this is about uh, the uh, practice of our uh, good conduct, which is Srila. Uh, and how this leads uh, directly to uh, Nibbana or the first step of Nibbana, which is uh, Sotapanna. So we will start uh, uh, with the householder Anatha Pindaka, who approached the Buddha. He paid homage to him and sat down to one side, the blessed ones, then said to him, Householder, when a noble disciple has eliminated this, eliminated five dangers and enmities. So I'll reuse uh, aversions, I think so. That is kind of a better, uh, kind of uh, sound, it sounds better. So I'll use the aversions and possesses four factors of stream entry. He might, if he, he so wished, declare of himself, I am one finished with hell, the animal realm, and the sphere of afflicted spirits, finished with the plane of misery, the bad destination, the lower world. I am a stream enterer, no longer subject to rebirth in the lower world, fixed in destiny, heading for enlightenment. Now, we see that the Buddha is uh, saying that he is the one who uh, is not the one who kind of makes anybody awakened, but one who follows his teaching or the teaching itself. It is not even the Buddha's teaching. It is just the teaching. He follows this teaching, the Dhamma, and by the virtue of just following the teaching and following the uh, conduct, the person is uh, going towards uh, the process of change and this first process of change is that he becomes a sotapanna and he can declare for himself and he does not need any any monk or any priest or any higher authority to say to him that he has progressed on the path to liberation so one who does yes question uh, sorry to interrupt what num what number in the anguttara nikaya what what number? This is uh, 27, uh, uh, bracket 7, enmity, enmity, uh, in bracket 1. So it must be 27. I, I, it may be in book of 9. I may have said book of 7, but I think it must be in book of 9. This uh, things are a little bit uh, complicated. I use uh, Kindle, so it is not easy to, for me to kind of trace the number. I think it, it should be in the book of nine. Okay. 27. Book of nine. Uh, 27. Animity. Okay, so just for, I guess for anyone with the book is page 1,284. Okay, that is good. Thank you, Bante. Okay, yes. So uh, this, uh, we go further. What are the five uh, dangers and uh, aversions that has been eliminated. Householder, one who destroys life with the destruction of life as condition creates danger 
and aversion pertaining to the present life and danger and aversion pertaining to future lives and he also experiences mental pain and dejection one who abstains from the destruction of life does not create such danger and aversion pertaining to the present life or such danger and aversion pertaining to future lives nor does he experience mental pain and dejection for one who abstains from destruction of life that danger and aversion has thus been eliminated so this is everybody who uh, knows uh, kind of signifies the first of our precepts so of not to take life so this is also the same for one who takes what is not given that is one who does not steal or one who engages in uh, misconduct sexual uh, nature of misconduct one who speaks falsely one who speaks uh, 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 like uh, harsh words one who uh, uh, uses slander and one who uses idle chat all those uh, related to speak speech one uh, and the uh, the next is who indulges in liquor wine and intoxicant the basis of heedlessness with indulgence in liquor wine and intoxicants as conditions creates danger and enmity pertaining to the present life and danger and aversion pertaining to future lives and he also experiences mental pain and dejection one who abstains from the, uh, uh, not taking what is uh, not given abstains from engaging in sexual misconduction and uh, abstains from uh, speaking uh, falsely and uh, speaking uh, harsh words uh, sp uh, speaking about slander sp uh, speaking uh, idle idle chatter and one who abstains from liquor wine and intoxicants the basis of heedlessness does not create such danger and aversion pertaining to the present life or such danger and aversion pertaining to future life nor does he experience mental pain and dejection for one who has abstains from liquor wine and intoxicants the basis for heedlessness that danger and aversion has thus been eliminated so here we see that the five precepts which uh, has been given has a direct relation to our mind and uh, how we feel now and how we will feel in the future so the future and the present uh are kind of linked to the actions which we take so whatever kind of uh, bante sometimes says that when uh, you are having a kind of uh, restlessness or sloth in torpor or certain kind of aversions which come while doing meditation this may be related to your past actions sometimes it comes up as pain sometimes it comes up as busy mind sometimes it comes up as dull mind so whatever actions you are taking you have to be kind of mindful of that when you are mindful uh, of all your actions and uh, you do them uh, from the point of view of being wholesome so when you are doing all the wholesome actions and you are mindful of that and you six are whatever uh, which is not pertaining to the wholesomeness or leading you towards your path so that is the way you kind of act and uh, you can progress in that manner so these are the five uh, things which are the dangers and which can be avoided uh, in uh, the by following the five precepts and what are the four factors of stream entry that he possesses here householder a noble disciple possesses unwavering confidence in the buddha thus the blessed one is an arahant perfectly enlightened accomplished in true knowledge and conduct fortunate knower of the world unsurpassed trainer of persons to be trained teacher of devas and humans the enlightened one the blessed one so over here it is uh, the same thing as the uh, itipiso uh, chants which you do so these are the same qualities of the buddha and one other benefit of doing it is uh, uh, it has been said that your mind becomes calm and there are no uh, aversions uh, when you are kind of contemplating about the buddha and your wine is rid of 
all kinds of uh, hindrances when you do this contemplation in a proper manner. It does not say about the chanting. If you are doing the chanting, it does that. But it says that you understand. So you have to read this in your language, which you understand. Say, if you have uh, Malay, then you uh, do it in Malay. If you uh, understand Marathi, then you do it in Marathi. If you understand uh, Tamil, then you do it in Tamil. So you understand and uh, contemplate what uh, are the qualities of the Buddhas. Each qualities can be kind of uh, uh, expanded and questioned by yourself and then uh, you should investigate those uh, qualities one by one. Like there is a quality uh, that he is a teacher of the persons to be tamed. So who are the persons to be tamed? The person has, is, has a willingness to learn. And when only he, when he comes up to the Dhamma, when he is willing to learn, and that is how he kind of gives ear. When he gives ear, he, give, he, he has inclination to practice. When he practices, he has increase in his confidence or faith. And then when he has increased in confidence, he, he learns more about the Dhamma. And when he learns more, his practice improves. And when he practice improves, he progresses. And that is a virtuous cycle one uh, comes into. So he progresses. So the next is he possesses unwavering confidence in the Dhamma thus. The Dhamma is well expounded by the Blessed One, directly visible, immediate inviting one to come and see, applicable to be personally experienced by the wise. So these are the qualities of the Dhamma. He possesses unwavering confidence in the Sangha Dhas. The Sangha of the Blessed One's disciple is practicing the good way, practicing the straight way, practicing the true way, practicing the proper way. That is the four pairs of persons, the eight types of individuals. So over here also, it is mentioning sotapanna, sotapanna path and sotapanna fruition, sakatagami path and sakatagami fruition, anagami path and anag anagami fruition, arahant path and arahant fruition. So there are eight kinds of people to be found in the Sangha. Uh, uh, this Sangha of the Blessed One's disciple is worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings worthy of reverential salutation, the unsurpassed field of merit of the world. He possesses the virtuous behavior loved by the noble ones, unbroken, flawless, unblemished, unblotched, freeing, praised by the wise, ungrasped, leading to concentration. These are the four factors of stream entry that he possesses. So what is the last thing uh, which they, uh, he is saying is he possesses the virtuous behavior loved by the noble ones. That is the five precepts he keeps. How does he keep? He keeps it unbroken, uh, flawless. So unbroken means, it does not mean that he never breaks it, but it means that when he breaks it, he realizes it, and then he takes the precepts once again. So there is one very uh, important lesson in one of the suttas uh, about a monk who had a bad habit of drinking. So uh, what would happen is that he would uh, 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 one way or the other fall into the habit of drinking and then he would come confess and then he would uh, 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 stay sober for some time and then again fall into the trap. Now uh, we have to understand that in the Sutta, uh, in the Vinaya, there are levels of uh, offenses. The biggest offices are for Parajikas. Parajikas are the offices you, if you do, the moment you do, you are considered to be a, a non-monk. You are not a monk and you uh, are kind of destined for hell. Uh, these are uh, having uh, uh, any kind of sexual activity with, uh, means, uh, uh, with a woman, uh, stealing, uh, 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 killing somebody. And uh, it is uh, telling your uh, attainments, uh, exa exaggerating your attainments or telling those attainments which you don't have in order to get more uh, money or food. So out of greed, you exaggerate your achievements. Say somebody says that, oh, this uh, monk has uh, the second jhana or this monk is a uh, arahant or something like that. And then he kind of... Uh, agrees with that or if he says for himself 
that see i can stay in the fourth jana but he was he has never attained that the fourth jana but he says this to impress people to get gain so that is in parajika so that is the highest uh, offenses then there are uh, offenses which are uh, sangha desa when you do certain activities the sangha has to come and punish you and then uh, you are uh, free from that then there are uh, other offenses which are uh, to be uh, re relinquished so if you get a robe which is not in a proper manner then you can you have to relinquish that so those are the uh, third uh, kind of serious and the, the fourth uh, in seriousness if you can say or if you can say that the fourth uh, 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 class of uh, offenses which are there which can be confessed that means if you do the wrong you realize you have done the wrong you uh, go to another monk and say i have done this wrong and the monk uh, says that do you realize that you have done this wrong he said yes i realize and the monk advises don't do this again and then this this is the confession so it is by confession you can absolve yourself so drinking is also one of the offenses where if you uh, drink uh, alcohol or any kind of intoxicants you can go to a monk and confess and then that you are absolved of that guilt so your guilt is absolved when you confess so he used to confess but uh, what happened is uh, buddha uh, was asked upon his uh, passing away that uh, what was his destination the monks came and were kind of cu curious this is a kind of odd monk who used to kind of fall into drinking so the buddha said that uh, when he ha uh, he is a sotapanna and in the next seven lifetime he will attain uh, arahanthood so the monks were uh, kind of uh, puzzled uh, and they said how can that be that this monk who was kind of known for his drinking but the buddha said that after uh, uh, before he died he again has taken her precepts so he had taken the precepts once again before he had passed away that means that when you take the precepts it is you uh, uh, you kind of absolve yourself for, of the guilt of that uh, uh, thing which you have broken say if you find that you are speaking to somebody and you are kind of ch chatting and then you are uh, you find that you are not uh, using the perfect words or uh, language and then you realize that maybe i was kind of uh, creeping about somebody else you know so i was doing slander maybe so then you say okay i'll take the precepts and then i will continue so that 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 is uh, that you have to consider as being uh, that it is unbroken flawless is also that you have to see the uh, smallest way you can kind of improve in the language which you are using or uh, the behavior which you are using and blemished so that there is no kind of uh, uh, those are the kind of uh, uh, there is no kind of uh, what you say uh, we can, uh, say spot spotless so you have to be spotless unblotched free praised by the wise ungrasped leading to concentration so uh, this the way you are uh, keeping your precepts is kind of leading you to concentration that is to collected mind that is the calm mind so you have to keep your precepts in that manner if you are keeping the pre precepts and you are following the uh, uh, contemplation of buddha dhamma sangha and you are keeping the precepts uh, well then what happens is you uh, you will be certainly uh, attaining the uh sotapanna so that is what the buddha is promising you that there is nobody you have to go to there is no monk who is kind of overseeing this uh, process so it is a process of your own mind and that mind process is uh, only creating this causes and condition for you for progress how so dear when a noble disciple has eliminated these five dangers and uh aversions ha and possesses this four factors of stream entry he might if he so wished declare of himself i am one finished with hell the animal realm and the spare of afflicted spirits finished with the plane of misery the bad destination the lower world i am a stream enterer no longer subject to rebirth in the lower world fixed in destiny heading for enlightenment or awakening so this is something a householder 
or a person who is uh, following uh, the householder's way can for himself declare that he is a sotapanna. So the stream entry is open to all uh, by just following the precepts, by being uh, good uh, in uh, uh, your way of uh, your conduct and also being aware and mindful in a way that it also leads to your uh, being concentrated. It's also a process like if once a person who is blameless, then they, they don't need anything to, uh, say if he keeps the precepts, then he will uh, have in his mind a blameless uh, 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 state of mind. There is no volition required for the person to think that I am following the five precepts, I should be blameless or I should have uh, blamelessness uh, uh, arise in me. When he has uh, that process, he does that, uh, follows that five precepts, automatically the feeling of being blameless arises in one. When uh, that arises, then it also leads from one thing to other, another and it leads to a collected mind. And by that, he is calm and he is able to do his activities more uh, clearly and he can also follow the precepts also more uh, clearly. So it's also again a virtuous cycle which the person enters into. So Buddha is all about keeping your focus on the virtuous, keeping your focus on the wholesome. So by following the uh, uh, teachings of the Buddha, you can uh, progressively uh, go ahead in your practice on your path. So this is all uh, for now. And uh, is there any questions? I'm just water. Are there any questions regarding practice or any other thing? Pante? Uh, yes. Um, thank you for thank you for the sutta. Um, I'm interested just in the uh, an aspect of this where uh, you talked about the monk who's uh, drinking and retook the precepts. That that's fine. Uh, I can understand that. Um, in the context of uh, you know redressing the balance of of their mind. Um, but what if uh, but what if this is if as it were. Uh, becomes a, a habit. So, if you like, uh, it becomes a, a way of absolving uh, parts of parts of your behaviour simply by thinking, oh, "Well, I can always take the precepts again." Yeah, that is gaming the system kind of a thing. You know, you try finding a loophole. See, if you are finding a loophole, you are doing that deliberately. Mm. Uh, deli by doing that deliberately, you are kind of uh, kind of encouraging your mind to follow a pattern, okay? When you're uh, encouraging your mind to follow a pattern, it will not give you the results of uh, uh, the clarity of mind. And then mm. you will not progress. So this is not a kind of a, a technical thing that you keep the precepts and you uh, kind of uh, get something, you know? So it is about how you are developing your mind. So in that process, there are certain habitual tendencies which are strong. And because of that, you may fall off. Mm the horse uh, uh, kind of, you know. So then when you are falling off the horse, there is a process where you can get back. But there are certain things which are not kind of acceptable, uh, like the parajikas. So if, when you do that, immediately you are uh, doing something which are so off that you are kind of off the wheels, you know, off uh, the path. And you have to uh, go into hell in the next life to uh, kind of atone for whatever you have done. So th that is, uh, there are kind of degrees of uh, things which you can uh, kind of do uh, where you can uh, absolve yourself by confessing. But there are certain things which you cannot do just by confessing. For certain things you have to relinquish. Like if you get a robe uh, uh, from somebody and you have not followed the process of uh, collecting that robe, then when you, uh, somebody finds out or you realize that, oh, I may not have done the uh, process of getting this robe, then you have to relinquish it to the other monk. So something like that. 
so there are uh, 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 this system cannot be used for uh, kind of a, uh, as a loophole if you are losing it as a loophole then you are injuring yourself because you are not doing it to kind of enhance your understanding of your mind enhance your understanding of how things are working so does there, does there need to be, a, as it were, a, a heartfelt um, regret uh, around your action at the time that you retake the precepts? Um, th yeah, there needs to be a solution within yourself. Yeah, it, uh, uh, more than heartfelt, it has to be a clarity of thought. Clarity has to be there uh, that this has, I have done this and I am kind of confessing it in order to kind of improve myself. This is like a six hour. You know, uh, yep. it is uh, similar to a six R that you recognize, then you release it, uh, then uh, you come back uh, to this thing, uh, your path. So this is the way uh, uh, this uh, the uh, the process of confession also works, and the process uh, for a lay person is not to go to anybody, but uh, certain uh, kind of mo uh, monks kind of uh, give a process where they say uh, uh, select a kalyana mitta. And then uh, you can, uh, whenever there is a precept you break, you can uh, uh, call the uh, Kalyana Mitta and uh, talk to him and say, this has happened and do this. But this is not required. You can just uh, ta uh, take a precept. You can, if you have that uh, printed from the Masukha website, you can just uh, take the, that uh, printout and do it. Or you can go to the Buddha image, about to it and do it. Whatever you want to, uh, you are comfortable in. But it, it does not have a, this sutta I, I like because it does not have a external factor for you to progress. So there is no priest, there is no Buddha also involved in that. So it's, it's the Dhamma. The, uh, the Buddha says that he, uh, 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 the monks ask that we live in dependence of the Buddha, okay, as our teacher. Who, who does the Buddha uh, live in dependence of? So the Buddha says, I live in dependence of the Dhamma. So Dhamma is actually the Supreme. And yes. the Dhamma is what is kind of taking you. Dhamma is just a, a way of saying that this is the phenomenological aspect of uh, the uh, action and reaction of our uh, uh, thoughts or our actions which are doing as a human being. Not as a physical, physical being, uh, everything is... Uh, they say that is uh, linked to action and reaction, you know, there's a cause and effect for everything which happens physically. So uh, the, the theoretical scientists will say that they can be confident that they can collapse this whole process which has happened till now, till the time of Big Bang. The each atom going and uh, striking somewhere and creating something and the whole process which has come up till this time, they can understand by cause and effect. But they don't kind of, uh, uh, they are not able to see the, how a human behavior and their cause and effect affects the person now and they, that will affect the person in the future. And what has the past actions which are affecting the person now? So this are not, uh, this is, uh, are able, the scientists cannot uh, see this. You need a Buddha to see this, you know, come see this and clarify. But that is the only thing which he can do. He can clarify the process by which our actions will lead to uh, the other reactions. And by that uh, process, we understand the process. And then by doing understanding that, we don't fall into traps. So uh, using of loopholes is uh, a possibility, uh, but it is of no use to the person who uses that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so picking up something that you said in the last, uh, the last talk, I think, um, and this, uh, this faith in the Dharma and the faith in the Buddha is actually faith in this uh, uh, dependent origination. Yes, dependent origination and dependent origination is a process of cause and effect. That's the reason the Buddha says that if this arises, that arises. If this, uh, uh, this comes to be, that comes to be. If this does not arrive, that does not arrive. If this does not come to be, that does not come to be. So it is just a cause of cause and effect. And mm -hmm. cause and effect is also dependent origination. So yeah. that is what you have faith in. 
So, so that's, uh, um, I'm just looking at the wording here. Uh, uh, this, this is what's been well expounded by the Buddha. Um, and uh, uh, really, th this, is, uh, this is really the focus of our practice, is, is to understand and see this more and more uh, throughout uh, daily life. Yes. You have to see that how you are, uh, uh, your actions are affecting your emotions now and how it also affects your emotions in the future. Mm. So that is how we do. We cannot kind of uh, control what is coming up uh, now in our mind, you know, as thoughts, because there is a feeling and then there is a, a craving and then there is clinging because all these thoughts come up in the clinging process. So now this uh, process which is there uh, is something which you recognize that what arises is impersonal, okay? Because it, it is dependent on what has happened in the past. But what is it is, is uh, imper impersonal because it is doing, it's a, just a cycle of cause and effect which is coming up. And then it come up, comes up as a thought. And there is a string of thoughts created in uh, a emotion. And that emotion uh, is turned into a mood. So that depression which a person feels is just a, a process which is an, uh, uh, like uh, 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 which is one upon another. You know, a, a feeling comes up and the feeling persists and then there are many thoughts. And after that many, many thoughts, then th this becomes a mood and this becomes a kind of a state of being. So that those things kind of grow one by one. So you have to understand that this is an impersonal process first. So you are not so attached to your uh, current uh, mind states. And, and the, the self-declaration of being a, a sort of pan, um, this seems to me to be um, that there, need, there needs to be a, a consistency in your, in your personal behavior. Um, it, uh, so uh, it, it's really about having the clarity, the, the clear sightedness to see what is actually coming up in your mind. Got it. Um, now, is it about what comes up or how you address it, how you work with it? Because you, you just how you work. Right? How, how we are with it. But see, when you are working with it correctly then what comes up also changes because what you are doing now creates your future. So if yeah. your uh, actions are correct at this point of time, then in the future, what arises also you are clear. So what arises is in quality different from what ar arose in the past. Okay, yeah. So that is uh, uh, both the combination of those both the things that you have to be uh, uh, clear about what is arising also and how you are addressing that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any other? Yes. May. Yeah. Uh, yeah. May I uh, continue from Hugh's question on that clarity of mind thing yeah. to check because. Um, Maybe I'm understanding wrongly, but does someone who is a stream entrant need to need to have the same clarity of mind as someone who has gone through, uh, you know, uh, all the four jhanas and uh, gone through to experience cessation at least once to have that. Clarity that it has to be a hundred percent clear uh, clarity. See that hundred percent clarity will only come to a arahant, you know. So at Sotapanna, there are three things which uh, is also mentioned over here in this sutta. The, the one is uh, the, the, in the in this uh, maybe it is not mentioned in this sutta. There is another sutta. That one thing is that you have uh, clarity. That is, you don't have doubt that this will lead to your awakening this path will lead to your awakening you don't have any doubt second thing you realize that you cannot attain awakening through doing practices by say chanting by uh, doing a fire worship or doing sacrifices you will not be able to attain awakening 
so that is what you kind of understand the third thing you understand is you get insight into the no, uh, impersonal nature of your thoughts okay so you know that what arises is not me not mine and not myself but that does not mean that there is no ego or anything like that or there is no uh, complete uh, end of the self so even an uh, uh, anagami will have a certain kind of ego asmi mana which they say uh, there is a certain amount of ego he will be there it is explained in a way that uh, if a uh, cloth is uh, put in mud and then washed uh, it is not as white as a new brand new cloth there is still a stain in that so that <coughs> amount of uh, ego is still there in a anagami also so egolessness uh, state will only come when you are an arahant okay so when you uh, and the buddha also says one thing that if you are uh, a sotapanna with fruition then what however uh, a kind of uh, uh, whatever you are doing uh, you will not be uh, taking this eighth birth so that is also a guarantee which the buddha gives that uh, whatever uh, happens uh in the conduct of a person he cannot go beyond beyond that conduct that will take him to the animal realm or lower mm -hmm. so he will be born in a human realm or higher for the next seven lifetimes yeah abante just to clarify a little bit further on that can you explain the difference between um having the understanding that all thoughts or all phenomena that arise is impersonal versus still having the ego could you clarify the difference between that the difference is that uh, see there are a certain amount of habitual tendencies which we have so those habitual tendencies still kind of uh, affect us and in even the habitual tendencies are certain times so kind of uh, prominent that uh, they uh, can affect even an arahant so arahant uh, can uh, kind of live in a palace also uh, arahant can live in a forest or arahant can live uh, teaching or arahant can live uh, without teaching and those things are kind of inclinations of the mind inclinations of minds are also kind of habits so say a, a arahant is there who wears uh, rag clothes but uh, uh, and uh, he says that that is okay for me you know and arahant is there uh, he is offered uh, any kind of robes you know uh, uh, a expensive robe or a cheap robe he will he will take that robe he will wear a new robe uh, uh, he has no i kind of issues with that so it depends on the inclination of the mind and inclination of the mind is something which is a kind of habitual tendency so there are certain habitual tendencies which still are seen in arahants so that is uh, uh, still there uh, when you are doing your activity so when uh, that that pull or the push is there which is of a higher nature then you automatically kind of fall into that default behavior if this happens you do that so that is a learning process and some curves are longer and some curves are shorter based on how much you have practiced and how much uh, is your parmi or uh, there so parmi using a parmi is just a way of a explaining but there are no there, this are not kind of a uh, objective uh, definitions there is no uh, kind of a, a level of parmi somebody can kind of uh, say Uh, the buddha is an exception so buddha can say that you have this much uh, parmi or something like that but other than that it is not possible for this but it's a it's a way of explaining so you have to take it as a kind of a uh, subjective way so uh, of kind of understanding how we are uh, dealing with what comes up we know that this are this is impersonal but certain times uh, the pull which is there for those things like which are your habitual tendencies are strong and as you go along this uh, as you kind of change your habits it will keep on changing so it will uh, becoming weaker and weaker as you are changing because if is to start with a very strong habit it takes a little while for it to get weaker 
so certain uh, students uh, attain uh, uh, kind of uh, a lot in one retreat you know and certain students take a few years so it is uh, based on uh, their own kind of uh, karmic background or baggage which one comes with so one should not kind of uh, be uh, in a hurry <laughs> as such you have to uh, let it be let it take its own time but it will definitely happen yes yes sharma ji sab after listening to you ante ji yeah after listening to you now i got a doubt okay tell me even uh, the actions of the arahant ha huh. are not uh, three rooted alobha alobha moha adosha they are not uh, uh, rooted in any of those uh, thing lobha dosha moha they are not rooted in that alobha adosha amoha so they are not uh, rooted in those action they are rooted in certain other things like uh, their way of speaking or their way of behaving or they, their way of residence agreed please yes. allow me to speak uh, alobha because he is having panchakanda yeah roots are there the, those roots are holds some always but by after listening to your speech talk even if he has some habitual tendency immediately he exhibits the habitual tendency when compared to this is the see uh, arahant uh, uh, is uh, as Let a level ha the chief disciple of buddha sari buddha once he is moving along with him and he saw a stream immediately jumped into it there after some time buddha someone questioned him why you did this jump to the when compared to other fellow people they moved uh, ja- Slowly into the stream, but he jumped into the stream. Immediately, Sariputta realized and told, "It was my habitual tendency." Despite his arahant, uh, one of the stories I read, not story, the Sutta, somebody told like you. Okay. So, uh, it also exhibits uh, sometimes his habitual tendency because of the five kanda, five kanda are available, and because of their clinging. Clinging is are there uh, not in the sense that uh, they want something like like an action reaction. It's only habitual tendency. Ah. It's only lobha. No, no, that is not uh, the thing. It's uh, there are certain uh, spring action kind of a thing which happens. Ah. They don't. Ha- they are not related to any of the uh, attachments. Ah. So it is like uh, if uh, somebody has an inclination. for uh, having a ra- rag robes okay so he will wear the rag robe but say if buddha comes along and says that this is a silk robe you have to wear it so he will have no problem doing that because there are no attachments over here okay. but uh, one has a uh, inclination to certain things some have inclination towards uh, psychic ability that is uh, the moglana had inclination to psychic ability so he developed his psychic abilities and sariputta had inclination to the wisdom side so he developed his wisdom side uh, that does not mean that uh, uh, sariputta was not good at uh, psychic uh, ability and uh, that does not mean that uh, moglana was not good at the wisdom aspect but they had inclinations towards that thing so they developed it in a much more better manner is the different uh, angle you are speaking i, I am speaking only habitual tendency immediately it comes uh, even to the arahant also because of panchakanda and it is on a rare ha uh, rare occasion it comes so it it is uh, something in a rare occasion so certain uh, rare occasions this may kind of show up because that uh, pull was higher like uh, uh, a, 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 uh, there is a choice of a residence okay uh, he can go to a forest monastery or he can go to a city monastery when he comes to a city so 
a monk who is inclined to go to the forest monastery, uh, who is an arahant, he will go to the forest monastery and one who is inclined to go to the city uh, monastery, he will go to the city monastery. But that does not mean he has attachments. If the, the meeting was set uh, that everybody has to go to the city monastery, he would have no problem going there. You see, because there are no attachments over there. But if given a free choice, they naturally flows, the water flows in their direction, which is inclined. Yes. I intention to speak about this. Hmm. Attachment or not, that's a different issue. It's okay. After okay. you are speaking, yes. I don't want to exhibit all of a sudden certain actions like this. It is only habitual tendency, it comes. Even yes. for a Correct. Because Panchakanta is available. Panchakanta is there, so certain uh, kind of things can happen. Thanks. And there, if we, if, we, if we want, attachment may not be there. But always he will not have three rooted, three wholesome rooted, that is, uh, at least one will cling to that uh, because of the habitual tendency, and he jumped into the water. That's to Arahant Sariputta. Speaking from the beginning, for Buddha, it is not there. For Buddha, it is not there. I'm agreeing totally. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there are certain individual differences in people. So we have to be aware that the, that kind of things can happen. And one can take one own time and to progress also. So one has to be patient. That is the reason uh, Bhante also says that everything, uh, every time that uh, patience leads to Nibbana. That is the persistent and being patient and being enthusiastic about your actions is a kind of helpful for you to grow. Okay, Sadhu. Anything, any other questions? Any new questions? Anything related to practice? Um, Bandeji. Yes. Um, so the, the med now meditation practice, sometimes when I, when I do a meditation, I feel a, quite a heaviness on my head. Correct. Um, I, the heaviness become is such that, you know, you, you, as if so there is a load kept on the head. And though the, the, in the six hour process, I recognize that it is there. But I'm not able to um, uh, remove my attention from there at times because of the heaviness is so so strong that you know, even if you try to move it to some other place, you just, just find it very difficult. Yeah. So certain times, uh, what happens is that the heaviness is already there when you start the practice. So what uh, is the uh, thing which you uh, do normally? What happens is we say that uh, re uh, relax. That relaxed step does not mean that you have to be totally relaxed. It means that you relax once and keep your smile and uh, keep on going to your object of meditation. And you, uh, uh, if that uh, heaviness becomes your uh, reason for uh, attention going over there in the heaviness, then you recognize that the, my attention is gone. You release your attention from the heaviness. You relax once, smile and come back. So let that heaviness be because heaviness is also a part of the practice and heaviness uh, of the mind, if it is a hindrance, then that you treat it as a friend. Okay. Because why do you treat it as a friend? Because it kind of uh, helps you reveal your relationship with heaviness of your mind or relationship with pain. So this is an opportunity to investigate your relationship with pain in this context. Uh, but the thing is that uh, while the heaviness is there, still I'm able to focus or not focus, keep my attention on the uh, object of meditation. Right. At times, what happens is the heaviness becomes stronger, that it automatically the you know it, it just moves away slowly, slowly from the object of meditation to that heaviness because because of the sensation, because of that, because of that you know that feeling becomes so strong. 
Okay, one thing which you uh, kind of uh, have to understand is meditation does not mean that you will be in a calm and uh, happy state. Calmness and happiness are byproducts of meditation. Meditation is done to understand how your mind's attention is moving and how it is impersonal and how it is uh, a dukkha is, you are creating for yourself. See, a dukkha explanation given by Bhante is very simple. Whatever is there, you resist that. That is dukkha. The pain in itself is not a dukkha. Pain is just pain. But you saying, I should not have pain, that is the dukkha. Okay? And you wanting uh, no heaviness is the uh, uh, dukkha in this situation. The heaviness and the pain in the head is not the dukkha. So uh, one thing you have to understand is meditation does not mean that you are in a calm state. The, all these photographs and uh, images of meditators being in a calm and tranquil state is kind of misleading. Because see, it, it is showing uh, you a state of... Uh, something which is a byproduct. It is not a, our aim in the, our practice. Our aim in the practice is to understand how the mind is working. And the, because of which, your heaviness when it comes, it is a hindrance because it is taking away your attention from your object of meditation. So when it is a hindrance, it is your friend. It is not your enemy. Because why? Because it is making you learn how your relationship with the pain is there, how your relationship with something which is unpleasant is there. This unpleasant may have some reason in the past, okay? And it may but resolve the, on the, its own. Huh. But the issue is it continues. Uh, so it, it over a period of time, it becomes stronger that you lose the interest in meditation. You, know, you, you tend to open your eyes because the moment you open your eyes, the heaviness yeah. stops. No, that is because your relationship with this uh, uh, this thing, heaviness is uh, something which you have to investigate, okay? When there is heaviness, there can be heaviness, but you can persist with that heaviness. But you have a, a, a default uh, understanding that there should not be any heaviness. So then uh, till the time the heaviness is there, you do not consider you being in meditation, okay? So that is a kind of a uh, your relationship with your heaviness. Now, this is what a hindrance does. Hindrance re reveals your attachments. And that is the reason hindrances are your friends. So when there is no hindrance, then you are just sitting like that. What are you learning? You are not learning anything about your mind's process. So certain times uh, it happens in a, a, a retreat that one person comes and says, the last day was, I, I, I had no thoughts. I was just sitting uh, like that uh, the whole day and there was nothing which came up. So the Bhante uh, one or two times said, okay, you can go. That is a bad day for me <laughs> because you have not learned anything uh, today. So uh, Bhante kind of jokingly says that it's good. You, if there is a pleasant feeling, it's good. And uh, uh, pleasant feelings are uh, something which uh, we say is not bad. It is not bad when it is coming through meditation. But the unpleasant feelings are also not bad. Okay? They are not bad. They are uh, kind of re revealing to us our relationship with the, those things. And the, those can have a past a reason to come up and they may persist. But what is the food for those uh, hindrances? You have to understand food and that is uh, nutriment uh, when you are doing meditation. The nutriment for anything is your attention to it. That is the reason 6R is there. No, You recognize your attention is not on your object of meditation. You release your attention. Then you relax, that is relax once. Then you uh, return to your, you re-smile and then return to your object of meditation. So this process which you are doing kind of uh, reveals uh, the importance of nutriment. Nutriment means your attention which you are giving, you are feeding it. One of the uh, uh, Indian uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, folk tales, they say that they, in your mind, there are two wolves. One is of the good kind and one is of the hungry, uh, the, the evil kind. So when you are uh, have a certain amount of food, 
you have to be careful that which wolf you are feeding if you are feeding uh, to an uh, pain your attention then the pain uh, grows because that pain wolf uh, becomes stronger and stronger and your meta uh, animal which you are uh, kind of uh, uh, wanting to feed you take away a food from them and put it to that so you have to be kind of uh, understanding what is your attention and how your attention kind of feeds those things so don't uh, consider that as an uh, kind of a enemy of yours in your uh, meditation consider it as a friend that this is grateful that it has come and now i can kind of learn my relationship with this which has come up and see how it goes okay and and ask um, i mean and you can just uh, give a feedback or you can write to me on whatsapp and check yes sharma <laughs> The moment willingly comes, it is nothing but craving. You should no, I, I don't follow it. Can you tell me once again? The moment pain is recognized, he has to do. He has to go for six, and it is craving only. Bante speaks like that. No, but uh, what comes up as a pain directly? can be a certain uh, thing which are from the past like bante also used to experience a pain he used to say that somebody has put a knife over here and come over here and turn the knife that is the kind of pain he used to feel but while doing uh, six hours and while doing meditation one day he felt that this has gone away this energy has dissipated and then after that he never felt a pain in the Uh, his shoulder or his arm so that is a kind of a process uh, we have to go through by understanding and doing oh. yes uh, bante if i may because uh, i i do have uh, all kinds of pains and heaviness and they arise dissipate and everything many different levels anyway there's two tips i find from the buddha in the suttas that really helpful yeah. um first one is the the reflection of this is not me this is not mine this is not myself and uh keep doing that the whole day that seems to help a lot okay. and then the the second tip that i found that helps me a lot uh lately is the uh medit uh, from the mn62 meditate like water so like kind of the the hindrance but we just meditate like water like around the hindrance kind of thing so these two tips i found quite useful see this uh, reflection of uh, I, this is not me this is not mine this is not myself is a very kind of a profound uh, kind of perception buddha says that if you can uh, Uh, keep your perception on that that will lead to nibbana so that's a kind of a profound uh, point of view uh, through which we are living our lives then it kind of can affect us in a very positive manner so that's a very good thing and the the meditation on water and then uh, there is meditation on uh, earth the meditation on wind uh, so on fire so those uh, meditations are also very helpful yes i i i, I would say that those are kind of uh, very uh, good and wholesome ways of looking at it yes sir sir practice is less and knowledge is more ah no no it, it, it uh, yeah practice heavily on her uh, in her body <laughs> no no that is not the case it, it it depends we cannot say that is the reason we do not say we can say that what is present and how we are dealing with it present why it has come it is not our concern that is the reason the bante also says we don't deal with why we deal with hows knowledge is more that ah. is the problem <laughs> <laughs> so we have to say how it is happening and how we are dealing with it so that is it we should not kind of think why it is happening to me why what did i do in the past <laughs> don't think about those things <laughs> <laughs> okay so any more questions nothing but yet element is getting activated more <laughs> what is getting activated element at the at the 
Earth element. Earth element. Okay. Earth element is getting activated, and she is getting. She is hard. She is feeling hard at all her body parts or something. She is doing in the beginning. Okay, that that I I don't kind of uh, prescribe to that kind of a thing that uh, these are elements, uh, but that is a kind of a, a point of view. But uh, when you are six hearing, you are kind of getting away from that, and the perception that this is not me, this is not mine, this is not myself, is a kind of a profound perception. Uh, and Buddha says that you should develop those perception, and it will lead to nibbana. So because one who develops the perception of not self also develops the perception of impermanence because something which is not self is impermanent and then he has insight into dukkha also because if something is self it is being taken personally and that is the reason you are creating dukkha and if you are understanding uh, not self you are also understanding dukkha and impermanence so you understand the trifactor so that is uh, the benefit of doing that practice so you continue that uh, that is a very good thing and uh, if uh, you feel that uh, it helps you then uh, that is good if there is a, a, a continuation and a, and a, a progression a, a development in the path that is only what you have to see so continue with your practice uh, Any Ante? Other? yes um I got one question um uh about a week ago, I found that I was getting very angry in daily life uh, um, around a certain set of circumstances, but that anger wasn't present in my meditation. So I wasn't sure whether to work with uh, forgiveness or whether just use the forgiveness in daily life when it occurred and just uh, allow my practice to continue as it, uh, uh, as it normally does. You can do that. There is no problem in that. Uh, forgiveness is a, just a way of uh, looking at things uh, as an impersonal perspective. Okay. So when we are forgiving, uh, we are uh, saying that we don't, uh, I forgive myself for not understanding and for I am forgiving the other person for not understanding. So that is the uh, basics of uh, seeing this as impersonal, you know, that it happens because of not understanding and that is the reason the whole uh, cycle of dependent origination starts so you can continue with your practice and you can do this also uh, and as you develop more and more uh, daily uh, practice of uh, six r and forgiveness that more and more uh, you will have a kind of a handle on the uh, emotions and you should also not kind of uh, dwell too much into why the emotions are there Sometimes emotions are there, sometimes they are uh, absent, but they are a process which is happening according to cause and effect. So you mm -hmm. have to more focus on what you can do about it. Uh, that is uh, the energy. Uh, the, uh, the, you have to take away the energy from that. So forgiveness takes away the energy from your anger. So and puts it in the wholesome aspect of forgiveness. So that is a good thing to do. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. <laughs> Any other questions? If you are uh, finished, then we can uh, share the merits and uh, call it a day. <laughs> okay. May suffering once be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all being find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sab, sab, sab. So we'll see you. Uh, in next Wednesday, let us see if uh, Sister Kema can join. I'll I'll be uh, I'll be in touch with her. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. Thank, Thank you very much, Bhante. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.